Okay, we're going to make a simple door in UDK. I have a floor here and a directional light that I've added. But let's put a door here. Right click. Oops, not right click. We need to open our content browser. And I already have this door up because I've been playing with this tutorial beforehand. But you would type in door, check static meshes, and possibly hit all assets if necessary to see some different door options. I'm going to select this one. I like it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, with he, uh, with that door selected, we want to right click here and you want to add this as an interp actor. My option is here, interp actor, but if it's not, you can also go to add actor all templates and add interp actor here. Okay, but the key is you have to add this as an interp actor. And uh, if you do, if you use this method to pull up the interp act to add the interp actor, you'll have to select which mesh you want to use. And it actually already has it selected here, but you could press the green arrow if you had it selected. Hit OK. Okay, but the the point is you have to add it as an interp actor or this is not going to work. Now let's rotate it around where we can see them. Let's right click and add actor, add trigger. I'm going to switch to an overhead view so I can position and resize my trigger. It has to be accessible from both sides of the door. And I like to make it a little larger than the door generally. Right there, looks good. Let me click to a front view. I'm going to select non-uniform scaling so I can make them a little taller. Just in case you're jumping when you go through the door. Now we, we'll be sure that you'll hit that trigger when you get close to this door from any direction. Okay, switch back to, okay, that's still a little large. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. Now when you look at him from the top view, you can see it's surrounded and accessible from all sides. And also in the front view, it's tall enough uh, to cover the door. You don't want to make it too short. There's a possibility you could jump out of the trigger range, which would be bad. But anyways, there's no way to go to this door without hitting the trigger. Okay, let me go back to perspective view. All right, now I'm going to open Kismet, right click, new matinee, We'll change the matinee in just a second. First, we need to right-click New Event using Trigger underscore 2. Your, your trigger may have a different number at the end. And select Touch. Okay. Now, the reason you have to, you have to select your trigger before right-clicking in Kismet for it to appear here on your menu. So make sure you have your trigger selected before you follow that last step. Okay, now let's connect touch to play, untouch to reverse. So this means when you touch the trigger, it will open the door. When you are no longer touching the trigger, it will reverse the animation, which is the door closing. One last thing in Kismet, select this trigger. You want to expand sequence events in the properties and set your max trigger count to zero. If you leave it at one, it will only open once. You want to set it to zero so you can open it an unlimited number of times. So now let's X this out. Now we want to select our door. Make sure the door is selected or the next step will not work. Open matinee and it's off the screen. Let me pull them over. Um, in the matinee window, you want to right click in the gray area, add new empty group. I'm going to call this doors. And now I'm going to right click on this new empty group and add new movement track. 
make sure this movement track is selected and you have to have your door selected before you did any of this that's any of this that's why it's so important for you to select the door first okay movement track selected we're gonna click right here we put our scrubber to the one second mark click add key and then let me select my move tool and we're going to slide our door to the open position and you see this yellow line means that we have successfully added this movement track okay next step in matinee we need to slide over and grab the end of this animation it doesn't need to be five seconds long which is the default setting so let's slide it back over to one second so as soon as our door animates and you can actually test it here I'm gonna hit play oops let's stop then play you can see when it gets to the one second mark that's considered the end of the animation that's very important um, if you did not set your complete animation time to that one second mark then it would have to run through the rest of the animation all the way up to five seconds before it reversed and that would uh, break our door uh, well it would cause it not to work the way we want it to okay alright and you can also uh, play it in reverse to see what it looks like when it closes so there's opening and then playing in reverse to close Okay. All right, we're finished there. Um, let's go ahead and build all. Right click, play from here. So when I walk into the trigger, the door opens, he stays open. When I walk out of the trigger space, he closes. That's exactly what we want. We can, we can do it with just one trigger by making it surround the entire door. When I come at it from this angle, it opens properly and doesn't close until I walk away, walk out of the trigger. So that's working perfectly, except for one thing, we can walk through the door and shoot through it. That's not good. So the last step is to select this mesh, which is added as an interp actor. That's what got rid of the collision. Right click it, interp actor properties. You want to expand collision and just under collision type it will say no collision which is default for interp actors. You want to click this and select block all and that will automatically select block rigid body for you. Now when I play from here my bullets do not go through the door and I cannot walk through the door either. Most cases you'll want to set that you'll want to turn that collision on. Just in case your player runs into the door, you don't want him to run through it. And that's it. Thanks.